variety of motives for contesting as campaigning heats up. Bougainville Community Policing concept to be trialled in Hela and Jiwaka. And Manam Islanders struggling to find a way to mainland after recent eruptions. This is National MTV News with... Welcome back to National MTV News. More than 4,000 people in the Southern Highlands province will have access to a higher level of health care following the opening of the Waia Health Centre this weekend. Speaking at the opening of the centre, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill said new health care centres have been built around the nation over the past five years and this will continue into the next term of government. Mr O'Neill said alongside free education, the delivery of universal health care remains a central goal of the government. He said although many candidates are making false promises about education and health care, the voters of the nation will see what is being delivered. Manam Islanders affected by recent eruptions on the island are struggling to find their own way to the mainland as government assistance continues to be delayed. Last month, the volcano on the island erupted again, putting the island on a stage 3 alert. European Union Ambassador to Papua New Guinea, Ioannis Giocarakis Agripoulos, witnessed the first large evacuation of some of the islanders to the mainland. These are people mostly from high-risk villages of Dugulaba, Warisi, Boakure and Kuluguma. Authorities say there are more than 100 households that still need to be evacuated. Manam Volcano started belching smoke and flames late in April. Morobe Governor Kelly Naro says traditional landowners should seek advice from government agencies in the management of their customary land. Naro made the call as he appealed to landowners to keep political power in Lay District among traditional landowners of Lay. Naro acknowledged that Ahi clans, who are traditional owners of Lay City, also have several candidates running for the Lay open seat, and he urged them to be wise at the polls. We, the landowners, uh, we have to take ownership. Uh, problem, uh, most of the problem with uh, land, holdi uh, land holding in Lake City and uh, uh, the peripherals uh, involving uh, Ahi customary land and all this is because uh, the landowners are, are not united and they are basically uh, uh, doing business on their land uh, individually and uh, in all manner of uh, forms and ways and practices. Uh, so that is the biggest challenge. Uh, what we need to do is basically um, appeal to all these people to come together and we've been doing that for some time now and um, it's beginning to take shape but uh, a lot more needs to be done. The Commodity Support Facility, a collaborative development approach on Bougainville, has supported 16 community groups with grants of 6 million kina to help increase production and quality of cocoa. Farmers like former BRA commander Ishmael Toroama have moved on with life farming cocoa and is now the leader of the Amata Sustainable Cocoa Project. Toroama has been restoring cocoa production in his area, providing employment opportunities for youth. He hopes to see chocolate bars sold on shops with his organization's label. Australian High Commission Second Secretary James Marshall says the grants program supports all parts of the production chain to ensure Bougainvilleans grow their economy. The inaugural crowning of the Miss World Supermodel PNG was held last night in Port Moresby. Over 10 young women took the stage at Lamana's Gold Club, modeling outfits to represent PNG in China for the World Miss Supermodel pageant. Glenna Sa Glenda Sanada was crowned in the teen category, while Sheila Yama took out the adult category. Both will now represent PNG to, con to contest with other 60 countries in Macau, China. The Miss World Supermodel pageant will be held later this month. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more stories after these messages. Welcome back to the news. Turning overseas now, it is the hashtag that had the world demanding bring back our girls. Now, dozens of Nigerians missing Chibok girls are finally free. Officials say 82 of them were released after successful negotiations between the government and the terrorist group Boko Haram. 
After more than three years in captivity, it is the news that people around the world, not to mention the families, have been waiting for that 82 of the missing Chibok schoolgirls have finally been released from Boko Haram captivity. According to tweets put out by the Nigerian president, Muhammadu Buhari, uh, the, this release came about as a result of lengthy negotiation and there was a swap of Boko Haram suspects that was done in order to free these girls who will be transported to the capital of Nigeria on Sunday, May 7th, where they will be welcomed by the Nigerian president. Uh, the Nigerian president also in tweets goes on to say that a number of people were involved in this in this effort to free these girls. He, he thanks a number of individuals, including the government of Switzerland, the International Committee of the Red Cross, local and international NGOs, alongside security agencies of Nigeria. This really is a momentous moment. With three years having gone by, some had begun to doubt whether any more girls would be released. Uh, as you may remember, some 21 were released in October of 2016. And after that, there had been largely silence. We had heard no word of negotiations to bring about the release of more girls. But here we are on this day, celebrating the news that 82 more girls have now been freed and will shortly be reunited with their families. Of course, amid the joy, amid the celebration, we must remember that there are still well over 100 girls who remain in Boko Haram captivity, and there is no word as to whether negotiations continue to bring about their freedom. So that must be borne in mind. But for the families, for the families that await news as to whether their children are as part of this 82, this is just an incredible day filled with so much emotion as they look forward to being reunited with their loved ones. Uh, and we look forward to bringing you just uh, more coverage of, of, the, of their re-entry to, 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 to normal life. These girls have been through so much um, in their three years in captivity. Uh, we know that they've undergone tremendous hardship uh, while they've been away from their loved ones. And the road to recovery will be a long and, and a difficult one. But on this day, we celebrate the fact that the, they are finally free and they will shortly be reunited with their loved ones. A former Nigerian minister is ecstatic about the positive outcome of continuous campaigning by activists, government and social media which has resulted uh, which has resulted have led to the release of 84 young girls. She said continuous persistence in owning the problem by all campaigners led to the Chibok girls release. I'm joined now by Obi Eza Kwesali. She is the former vice president of World Bank Africa and Nigeria's former minister of education. 82 more girls coming home. You're wearing the button there that says hashtag bring back our girls. How are you feeling and how did you get word about this? I can't even describe how I feel. Uh, when um, the news uh, first broke, I couldn't hold myself back. Uh, and so I immediately uh, tweeted uh, that I am furiously praying right now that this news be true. And then I began to walk the phones. And uh, the more I walked the phones, the more it turned out that the news was actually real. And at that point in time, my heart was pounding so badly. I mean, I was palpitating. I just couldn't take it all in. I yeah. mean, we, we've had this expectation, but, but for it to actually then become true, that was emotionally a, a very big Hard to describe. Yeah, I can't imagine. While you talk, I've got chills right now, about, I mean, goosebumps, because the world got behind your efforts, so many people's efforts to say, no, this isn't acceptable. Bring back our girls, and the world held it up, and this is happening. So help us understand the, how the power of social media with the government is causing these girls to come home. You know, the, the power of social media was in the fact that globally, uh, the whole world took um, ownership of, of the problem of our Chiba girls. And so no matter where you resided or you reside, um, you were drawn to uh, the very tragic uh, story of girls who went to be educated and ended up being abducted by terrorists. Um, however, that was as far as it went. When social media 
then moved on and the rest of the world carried on with other priorities. Uh, it simply took uh, those of us in Nigeria who had been uh, the, the voices that uh, began to call attention to the problem uh, that had befallen these girls uh, to continue to persist. If there was no persistence uh, in terms of uh, local ownership of the problem, uh, it would never have uh, resulted in the series of, um, of, of, of positives that we have seen. And I am so grateful to God. I really am, because it took a lot of faith for every one of us that have been uh, advocating for Achibo girls to continue, even when the rest of the world moved on to other priorities. Australian pop band The Shepherds, who are in the country for the Port Moresby concert and to be a part of Vocal Fusion Battle of Season 3 and 4, performed to the fans last night. Among the hits played last night were the hits Let Me Down Easy and Geronimo. Their music teacher and famous PNG music artist, Burka Tau, was invited to perform with them on stage. They say they hope to emulate the worldwide success with their sister Emma and the rest of the band. The band's Keep Me Crazy is the latest in their global successive streak of hit singles, including Let Me Down Easy. A bit late, it was worth the wait as fans turned up to the Cosmopolitan to hear some of the newest singles the Shepherds are preparing to release in their new album. The new single debut, Keep Me Crazy, was also performed. And of course, the ARIA winning award songs Let Me Down Easy and Geronimo. George Shepard, the lead vocal and keyboardist, kept the crowd alive. Amy Shepard, the sister of George, is also a lead vocalist, and the younger sister, Emma Shepard, is the bass guitarist and backup vocalist. Also part of the Shepherds is Michael Butler, lead guitarist and backup vocalist, Jason Bovino, rhythm guitarist, and Dean Gordon on the drums. One of the highlights of the show was when the band called up PNG music legend and their former music teacher Buruka Tal, who taught them at the Sir Herbert Murray International School, which is now known as a part of Ella Murray International School. While the Shepherds put on an awesome show last night, you can catch them at the grand finale of Vocal Fusion Battle of the Season 3 and 4 tonight live at the Cosmopolitan, where they will be guest judges and also be performing. Adelaide Rocks, Kari National, MTV News. You're watching National MTV News after the break. True Guy Sports, stay with us.
Two Kai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. The Kumul scored their second straight Pacific Test victory with a 32-22 win over the Cook Islands on Saturday. Fullback Stagoth Amen was the hero for the Kumuls, running in two tries and saving another with a fine cover tackle on his opposite number, Shans Nicole Klockstad. Both of Amien's tries came from probing runs down the Kumuls left side and both times he created something from nothing. He said he was grateful for the opportunity and was humbled to have received the Man of the Match award. They came, really, they came really hard. Um, we, were, we came into the game uh, open-minded. We didn't uh, underestimate them. Uh, we uh, took them, uh, like, took them on uh, uh, as, a, as a contender, and uh, uh, fortunately, we came up. So, came up with the win. So, congratulations to the boys. Yeah, well, enjoy the win. The SP Sports Awards will mark its 25th anniversary this year. The annual awards is in recognition of the achievement of sporting personalities, administrators and others. The guest speaker this year is rugby league legend Wally Lewis. Nominations for the various sporting categories have closed and organizers are now preparing for the event at the end of this month. Special guest on the night will be one of rugby league's great and former Australian captain and Queensland state of origin hero Wally Lewis, who started playing at an early age before becoming one of the most recognizable player in the history of rugby league. Known as the King and Emperor of Lawn Park, Lewis is the 30th member of the Sports Australian Hall of Fame formally elevated to legend status. Lewis said he is looking forward to attending this year's SB Sports Awards in Port Moresby. Hello Papua New Guinea, I'm Wally Lewis and I'm looking forward to meeting you all at the 2017 SP Sports Awards Nights. See you in Port Moresby. This year we'll see 12 categories going for Male and Female Athlete of the Year, Team of the Year, National Performance of the Year, Community Sports Initiative, Junior Male and Female Athlete of the Year, Best Official of the Year, Sports Photo of the Year, Sports Media Award and People's Choice of the Year. Since its inception in 1992, Moria Kona of Rugby Union was the first to receive Sportsman of the Year Award and Derry Nightingale was Sportswoman of the Year for golf. In 2002, swimmer Ryan Pinney and weightlifter Dika Toa had their fair share of winning Sportsman and Women Award of the Year, winning five consecutive times. Sporting codes that took SP Sports Awards more than once are squash, rugby league and yachting. With 2016 and early 2017 witnessing some international sporting events, the SB Sports Awards, it is expected to see a few favourites appear again this year, take place at Crown Plaza on the 27th of May 2017. Godwin Aki, National MTV Sports. To football and the National Premier League had its round two of the season at the PNG Football Stadium in Port Moresby. This weekend, Admiralty FC managed to keep Hikari United at bay until the final whistle after conceding two goals to one. Hikari United went up against Admiralty in the first match. Admiralty splendidly defended their position and warded off all of the opponent's attempts. The resistance in defense put up by Admiralty, however, couldn't hold up for long as Hikari finally broke through to score a double. Despite conceding two goals to one, Admiralty coach Peter Sakiel said his side is made up of a young bunch of players and is grateful for the experience against a good side like Hikari. Good, good experience. All these boys, I'm, I'm first time Lolo come to play Lord is the and um, you know, all Mangi Lo players, threat, the raw talent from the place, no NSL players for last year, except for two. That's uh, Saint Sakail and Roy Savua. They were the ones that, who got the team over here, and that's a new brand from the village. And uh, I'm Olikam Lea, so Olikam experience. They were dreaming to play against him, Akari today, and uh, we lost the game, but it's good. His counterpart, on the other hand, says his side needs to work on a couple of things and still a lot more room for improvements. A lot of improvement. We still have time for improvement. Uh, I'll work on that uh, during the, um, our train days and hopefully your boys can pick up and we work, uh, it will be a tough game again this weekend. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. Trukai Sports continues after these messages. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. 
Welcome back to Trukai Sports. The annual Trukai Fun Run is eight weeks away. The event is expected to draw thousands of participants right around the country. It will start on the 11th of June in major cities. Funds generated from this event will go towards helping Team PNG travel to Nassau, Bahamas for the Youth Commonwealth Games. Papua New Guinea will be represented in five sporting codes, tennis, boxing, swimming, athletics and volley beach volleyball. While swimming and beach volleyball have two athletes each, the remaining three codes are yet to confirm the total number of athletes travelling to the Bahamas. The Commonwealth Youth Games is from the 19th to the 23rd of July. The Trophy House Harrow's Darts Open Tournament was held at the Vision City Mega Mall in Port Moresby. The one-day event attracted 128 registered participants who competed for the top prize of 2,500 kina. Shoppers and onlookers crowded around to watch the 2017 Trophy House Harrow's Darts Competition at the Vision City Mega Mall. The mixed event saw contenders of 18 years and over, putting their arrow shooting skills to the test. The event, however, is contested in a 501 format. Each player would start with a, um, with a score 501, yes. and then uh, the competitors will be f uh, racing who gets zero first. The first person to get a zero wins the match. Coordinating the event is Trophy House Operations Manager Paul Passive, who said the event is the first of its kind. However, it will be an annual event from here on. So for this year, it's going to be 128 players, but the, um, it's going to be a yearly event. We expect this to be a yearly event. Not only does this particular event offer excellent entertainment and moment of relaxation, but a hefty prize to go along with it. Price money is 2500 for the first prize, 1500 for the second prize, and consolation prizes for the finalists. It may not be a physical sport like football or rugby, nor does it need a big venue to stage its competitions. But from Passivist's point of view, the code of darts is quite popular in Port Moresby. A lot of people are playing darts, that's what I would say. Uh, I was at, uh, we were just at the car club last Saturday and we were, we were surprised by how many people were actually playing the sport. That's only at one event on a Saturday. Um, there's a lot more events going on in the village, there's a lot more, um, lot more competitions going on also at home. People who are not even playing, uh, competing, they're just playing among themselves. Yeah. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. To the NRL, the St. George Illawarra Dragons may turn to a third choice for a goal kicker in the next few weeks. This comes after fullback Josh Dugan acquired a fractured cheekbone in the Anzac Test on Friday night. From seven games. Friday night's 3012 Aussie victory over the Kiwis came at a cost for the Dragons. The shoulder there of Packer. Yeah, it's a head clash here, I think, right? Fullback Josh Dugan was forced off the field in the 48 minutes after a bone breaking collision with Dragons teammate and Kiwi prop Russell Packer. Oh, yeah, Packers. Apparently, this is the second time this year Packer collided with Dugan, which resulted in injury. This time, this time. Time. Earlier this year, in the NRL Telstra Premiership Round 3, Dugan was at the receiving end of an accidental blow during Parker's attempt to tackle Colonel Ashak's Paul Gallen. Though Kangaroos coach Mal Maninga says Dugan is currently in surgery and they are yet to assess the extent of the injury. And the prospect of Dugan playing in the next few rounds and even the State of Origin Game 1 looks not so promising at this stage. Now the Dragons have already lost keeper and 5 8 Garrett Widdop and are currently relying on second pick Kurt Mann in the hubs. They will have to choose a third replacement in the coming weeks to perform Dugan's duties on field. Well, look at Dugan fly high and bring the... Dino Rosrico, National MTV Sports. And then in Strukai Sports, up next, your weather details for the next 24 hours. Strukai Sports. Strukai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Here's a look at the weather over the next 24 hours in the southern region, Port Mosby, mostly fine. Fine becoming cloudy for Daru and Alotau, cloudy with some showers in Kerma and Popandeta with a top temperature of 31 degrees. To the Mombasa region, mostly fine for Leh, showers with cloudy weather in Wau, fine becoming cloudy for Medang, Wiwek and Vanimo. 
of the New Guinea Islands region, mostly fine in Lorengau and Kaviang, cloudy with some showers for Kokopo and Rabao, fine although becoming cloudy for Kimbe, and showers and some storms in Buka Autonomous Region of Bougainville. And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg, all these major centres can expect some cloudy weather and showers over the next 24 hours. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. And that's the new sports and weather for today, Sunday the 7th of May 2017. On behalf of the MTV News team, have a pleasant working week. Good night.